Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, this is Little Karibo. And this is X the Dark One. And you're watching Supla. No, the Supla. The Supla. The Supla. The Supla. The Supla. The Supla. RKO! Hello, wrestling fan. edition, a fall edition of the Supla, I might add. Hi, I'm Andy Guan, and with me as always is Liam Dunn, who's it's, it's either there good. or there. Shut up. It's good to finally be back to normal. Did you just tell um, me to shut up? I did, because you're a twat. I, just, <laughs> I haven't been able to say that, because we've been on such strict time limits, I've had to put up with your shit for the past month. Wait, what? But now I can. Wait. I can tell you that you're a twat. So <laughs> no, you could have just told me that in any video. I'm pretty sure you have. Probably, but I'm just using it as an excuse to call it you now. Great, and with me as always, who probably equally thinks I'm a twat, is Sam Not Brooks. always, though. Not always, though, but okay. <laughs> Can I speak Brooks? now? Hello. Hi. Good to be back. Hello. Good to be back. But I want to make a quick announcement before we start getting into this, this topic uh, that we're going to discuss. Stick around for the end of the show, because we have a competition going, so... I will explain what the competition is, what the prize is, everything. Stick around for that. Uh, it's going to be fun, hopefully. Um, so stick around for it, yeah. But shall we discuss what we're talking about today, gents? Yes, Indeed. Please. Now, before before we do start, I should probably give a bit of a background history on this very special episode of The Supla that we do every year. Um, it's usually supposed to be for August, but... Obviously, we're 20th Century Fox deciding to not like us um, and YouTube bending over backwards for any corporate uh, money that they can get hold of. We couldn't do it. Um, But every August, we do one episode where we dedicate it to a very specific topic that we kind of debate and talk about. Um, So it's not the news this week. This week, we're going to be discussing the Divas Revolution. And I think we all have our own opinions on the Divas Revolution, what has led to it, whether there's a future for it, and whether it's actually happening or not. So that is going to be the topic for discussion. So shall we start at the beginning, guys, and discuss really where this Divas Revolution kind of, where WWE claims this Divas Revolution started? Well, I'll be happy to tell you. So... Move that makes little to no sense in kayfabe. Stephanie McMahon introduces some new challenges for Nikki Bella in the form of NXT call-ups. They are Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Sasha Banks. Oh my god, great moment, right? NXT call-ups. This is awesome. These women can wrestle, right? Oh boy, you're going to be disappointed over the next month or two. Let me tell you why. This whole thing is flawed from the outset because it's a diva's revolution brought in by a higher up in the company how does that fucking work now for me i'm just going to say my piece it's not even that it's not even that that doesn't make sense for me it's kind of the fact that when you kind of look at it these women there's nine women in this storyline. And I think you can make a storyline where all nine characters are interesting, they're fleshed out. I mean, something like the Avengers kind of proved that you can have these big ensemble stories. And even in two hours, even Guardians of the Galaxy, in two hours, you can get people to care about them. Um, WWE gives them 10 minutes every week. And we're now two months down the line. 
that is that's got to be what uh, two hours of just pure divas revolution story on just raw alone um i don't know anything about these these women and it, it annoys me because somebody like becky lynch who in nxt was probably my favorite female wrestler i'm in i'm pretty much in love with her to be honest but just looking at it as if i was just a fan who was watching raw nothing else i don't know who she is i don't know anything about her all i know is that she likes steampunk (laughs) (laughs) she's the girl who wears goggles on her head that's it but no i don't know anything about her charlotte's personality that i can get from just watching raw is she's rick flair's daughter yeah Yeah, that's that's all her character is (laughs) and sasha banks is kind of not the mean girl yeah uh, the Bellas are kind of like those, you know, the cheerleader types. Alicia Fox, I still to this day, she's been there, for, what, five years? Still don't know who she is. Longer still than that, really like seven or eight years now? Still don't really know who she is, no. right? She's I a actually, fox. If, somebody, if somebody asked me why she was on Team Bella, I would actually not be able to tell you why. I don't it's know why she's It's called Team Bella. And Two fox. thirds are Bella. Also, Alicia Fox is there. Why? Uh, I don't... And this is... Sorry, Andy, but this, to me, is the core reason why this Divas Revolution fails. Because we don't have characters that we're interested in. We don't know anything about them. There's... uh, Nikki Bella, as a champion, I don't really know anything about. She hasn't really defended the belt since, what, the summer? I think her last major defense was a beast in the East. So wait, technically she should be stripped of the title then. She should be, but as we know with when Trish Stratus was women's champion in 2005, they don't do that because Trish Stratus was the women's champion for over a year and she was out of action for about four months of it and she still had the belt. So, right. and this is this is another thing. I'll let Andy say his point before I go back to mine, but just keep the Trish Stratus thing in your mind for a, for a second and we'll come back to my point of view uh my second point of view as to why the steve's revolution fails but my main my main issue is i don't know these women i do not know their personalities uh, page is probably at this point the most fleshed out character and even then that's not saying much she's a pale english girl who who's just a bit up. who's just a bit pissed off that's all i know she just wants the belt but sadly that's the most fleshed out character all i know is her background what she looks like and what she's after that's it i don't know her weaknesses her strengths i don't know anything really besides that alicia fox i don't know anything about naomi i don't really know she turned heel because she attacked Paige in april that was it that's why we dislike her but she's Tamina, a ba- yeah, 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 Tamina, yeah, yeah. i don't think i've ever heard her utter a word now i'm not saying that's a bad thing you can have characters who are interesting without saying a word but i still don't know kind of like charlotte all i know is She's, t- she's Jimmy Snooker's daughter, but we can't say that now because he's possibly a murderer. So not possibly. She, she's just Tamina. She's just a uh, she's just a big lady. She has told. So I don't know any of these characters, and that's why it fails, and that's why the audience doesn't care. Remember, a couple of weeks back, the audience started doing a Mexican wave. You know what? Mm. I did feel like that was disrespectful, but I always think that's disrespectful. At the end of the day, there's people there working trying to entertain you. Yeah. Uh, and you have a right to say if you're not entertained, by all means, but you don't have to be so uh, rude about it, saying that they don't care. And it's quite evident at the fact that they were entertaining themselves. They don't care. And what does that say? If the audience doesn't care, in the in the arena, the ones at home probably don't care. You're failing at the storytelling. The, the issue for me is <clears throat> Stephanie. Yes, because big problem here. The the problem with it is is that when all these divas were in the ring, oh, I hate that word. When all these women, that's the other thing. Sorry, yeah. divas. Why? Mm. Why? I actually have an explanation for this. You know how men are superstars? They need a term to like categorize and brand their women. No, granted, no, they don't. granted, divas is a terrible way to go about it. No, they could no. just be anything else other than divas. Um, no. No, they actually don't. All they need mm, is yeah, to be called superstars. UFC fighters are all fighters. Doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Doesn't make any fucking difference. You are a fighter. They are superstars. 
The end. Can yeah, you imagine sure. if it was like UFC Supercars. vixen Ronda Rousey? That's stupid mm. as fuck, Ugh. and it's sexist, and it's weird, and it's derogatory. And I'm no raging feminist by any stretch of the imagination, but that's just fucking stupid. So the problem with Stephanie is, is that when all these women debuted on that Raw, she was the one wearing like high heels and towering over everyone, and introduced everybody. And every time he's a fucking segment, even at Takeover Brooklyn, she's there. It's this this revolution. Revolution in inverted commas is not about fucking. It's not about the fucking w- w- the actual women that they're bringing up. No, Christ, no. It's about Stephanie being like, remember, I was the one who did this. I'm Stephanie, and I have a fucking problem where I have to have everybody remember me about something, even though everything I've done for the past ten years is utter shit. But everyone will remember me because of this. Because I'm the one that, who's the fucking forefront of it, not the actual women. Because like Liam said, the women are just fucking there. They don't have any personalities. This thing isn't organic. This is a fucking... This was done by the WWE's marketing department. This is not organic whatsoever. It's it not isn't organic. It isn't no, organic. Because Stephanie was just like, oh, Paige, I see you're outnumbered three to one. Here's two partners. See? Not organic. Sorry, what? No, what? Hang on. That's not how partnerships work. You can't just... It's like... Do you remember when you were a kid at primary school? And right. You were kind of like, everyone had partnered up for a project. And they're like, oh, well, here's a person who's not partnered up either. Work with them and you'll be best friends. And be like, here's Becky fr- Lynch. <laughs> on your project. That's not, that's not how friendships work, teacher slash Stephanie. That's not how it works. How friends with Becky Lynch. Why? Because we say so. It's not an RPG game. You can't just talk to someone and have them added to your friends. Charlotte has been recruited to the party. And let's not forget the biggest problem with this entire thing, which always comes down to Nikki Bella's world record title reign. Or however they want to phrase it. This whole storyline, this whole Divas corporate-induced revolution storyline, is has been staggered and left to just ferment for about a month because they want Nikki Bella to break the fucking record with AJ Lee's longest title reign. Why? I have two theories. Why does Nikki Bella have to become the longest reigning Divas champion? And his name is John Cena! Why did you that's actually That's one of my other theories. One of them, uh, from what I've read on the dirt sheets, John Cena is heavily pushing Nikki Bella to hold the title for however long until they're comfortable with Nikki letting go of it. So that's one theory. The other one, I think it's like, to me, now this is purely a theory. There's nothing I've read online about this backing this theory up. It is just me having far too much time to think when I'm taking a shit. I think that this could be that last big sort of, you know, fuck you to CM Punk. AJ Lee is his wife, and this is the one last way to kind of try and erase any connection that CM Punk has. It's nothing really against AJ Lee, it's just they're a bit salty with her for being with CM Punk, and this is like the last sort of, well, you know what, fuck you and fuck your family. That's just a theory. A game theory! No, it's just a theory at this point. So, I don't know how... Like, I don't know how close I am to it being that. Um, I think it's more the John Cena thing. But a part of me does think a little bit has to be with them saying, fuck you to CM Punk. But this whole thing doesn't work with the Bellas there. You do realise that. Like, if the Bellas... The only way this thing can ever really work is if they beat the Bellas. And they beat the Bellas. uh, And they go away. And she didn't become the fucking longest reigning champion in history. That's the only way it could work. It doesn't... Because the Bellas are the product of the era that they're trying to get the fuck away from. Because they were in the deep, one of the diva searches originally, right? Am I thinking... Yes, they were. They No, they right. were in the diva search. So they were part of that fucking era. And yet, that's... Era? That's... They were part of that era, were they? Era. That, that's that's the uh, people. I think it's just. I think Old Quan just came back and just fucking broke down for a second. Anyway, that, 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 no, I'm fine. The point is, is that um, they're the they're part of that that system, and 
yet they're holding the, you, the title that, by the way, is ugly as fuck. Okay? That is the most insulting looking belt I have ever seen in my life. And the tag team titles exist, right? The thing is, those belts, those belts, that belt is so bad that it, it doesn't even look like a Barbie accessory. It's a fucking butterfly. How are you supposed to take this whole fucking thing seriously if they're fighting for butterfly title and the person that holds the butterfly title was a product of a diva surge? This whole thing doesn't work unless they go away. Simple. It, 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 could you imagine if UFC Dana White <laughs> turned round <laughs> to Ronda Rousey and said, Ronda, we're going to change the design of your title to make it fit in more with the image we want to give you. So we're going to give you a massive fucking tramp stamp title. <laughs> Ronda Rousey would fucking judo flip him in a heartbeat. <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> but that's the thing. Ridiculous. This is and, way... and the other thing as well that doesn't help it, going back to what you said, the whole sort of image, the Bellas do, I mean, okay, Let's be honest, at least for me, they are quite attractive women, right? Now, putting that aside, the thing is, they are the image of what they're trying not to be. And that is, they're kind of like, I don't know if they're like, they're originally South American or Puerto Rican or whatever, but they're kind of like the, the ethnic Barbie dolls. Do you know what I mean? No. I take the silence as you guys definitely do not agree with what I just said. No. That hurts the head. <laughs> Ethnic Barbie dolls. The, you know, the, like the whole sort of the saying? massive tits, the high heels, the mini skirts, the you know what I mean? Like the Why not just call them Barbie dolls? Because yeah. they're not white. But anyway. Why does that matter? Because they're not white. Why is that important, matters. Liam? Because it's part of who they are. That's like that's like saying oh, it doesn't matter if they're a boy or a girl, but it kinda does if you're calling them a he or she. Ah, why the what? fuck are you saying this? Stop it, please, God, no. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that defines them. I'm just saying, like... Anyway, what was your original point? Let's move on from this. <laughs> I was going to say, one of my other points is, they say this is a diva's revolution. Okay. <laughs> a revolution implies that there was something beforehand. Right, okay. Now, I might be wrong here, but I can't quite really remember when the Divas division was actually taken seriously. Like a decade ago? No! No! No, no, no! No! Ago, they had the Diva search. Mm. And I can't... I and, and, and before that, before that, was basically the Attitude Era. So... People so it's been those... at least 1997, which is like 18 years, right? So people nearly 20 saying, fucking years have gone by. People keep saying, sorry, Andy, but people keep saying, oh, it's the Divas Revolution. You know, we want the Trish Stratuses and the Leaders back. And yeah, who else? Who else do you want back? Name another one. Name another. Besides Trish and Lita, name another one. Molly Holly, Victoria, Jazz, Gail Kim. Are no. they up there with the likes of Trish Stratus and Lita, though? Not really. Yeah, well. It depends on what you're actually asking here. Like, what do you mean? In terms of the ones that you actually genuinely remember, because they always, WWE always bangs on about Trish. They bang on about Lita. When was the last time they talked about Molly Holly or Jazz or Victoria or Mickey James? When was the last time? I'll give you a hint. It's been a while. It's been a quite a while. And, and I don't even think 97 is the last time there was a Divas Revolution. I think the last time women's wrestling was really taken seriously was probably the 70s or 80s, when they weren't it, 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 going around scantily clad. Like, the May Youngs, the Fabulous Moolers, that was when it was, like, an actual division. I mean, you did have, like, a lunge of Blaze in the early 90s, but I don't know. Well, there's always going to be that one standout every now and then, but to say Trish in Lita encompassed the divas division you can't really have a divas division with just two people that's like saying the heavyweight division is just it's remembered for just the rock and stone cold but no there was undertaker triple h there was mick foley there was quite a few players back then the, yeah. so were there in the women's division as well they just weren't but on the same level of attrition leader but that's what i'm saying 
But this is the problem. The Divas Revolution, when only two Divas were the ones that people talked about. All they all they had to do, all all the WWE had to do, was just copy what UFC have done. That's it. You even had Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. All you had to do was literally just copy what the fuck they've done with Ronda Rousey. And sorry again, I just I, I'm just interrupting here because it's Andy, and no one really cares about his opinion. Why I'm am I here? Back to what I said previously about when Trish had the women's belt for over a year, right? Again, you want to say this is a divas revolution. You want to say that was when women's wrestling was respected, really? Because Trish was out of action for four months and still held the belt, and no one batted an eyelid. Mm. No one asked the question. Right, where was still, the women's still belt? In light, so you're telling me there was a four month gap. Where we had a women's division without a belt. The women You're telling still... me there were women on SmackDown at one point for a good number of years who weren't even fighting for a belt. And also, they were still in like bra and panties matches, the pudding matches and shit. So they weren't like... The Diva Search! The Diva Search! Christy Hemi! Ashley! HLA! They... Christy Hemi fought against Trish Stratus at WrestleMania 10 years ago. The winner of the Diva Search faced off against Trish 10 years ago at WrestleMania, right? When was this Diva's evolution, the original one, when did it happen? Because it certainly wasn't when the Divas... That's like... That is like... That's kind of supposed to be like if Maven challenged for the world title at WrestleMania. Oh. You see what I'm getting at? Like, yeah. it's not... No, right? You clearly... No one in their right mind would do that. So why is it okay to do it with the women's? You know why it's okay? Because no one gives a flying fuck. That's, That's kind right. of the problem with this revolution is that it's not going to be something... Like, WWE expecting this to be, like, overnight. Like, this, they're suddenly going to, like, change their minds. Like, as much as I hate people doing the fucking uh, Mexican wave in the middle of a match, you're not going to change people's minds and, and their hearts and minds in like i don't know a, fo- a 10 minute segment in, in okay. a 10 minute segment you need to at least give them time or this is going to take a while like you can't just fucking and the other thing i can change and it's 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 going back to what i said about the whole sort of you've got nine women yeah you can make an interesting story with nine women but mishmashing them all together in 10 minutes there's nine women for 10 minutes that's that's just over a minute of personality development a week on one show that I'm counting, by the way. I'm not talking about SmackDown or Main Event or any of the other 50 billion shows WWE has on the network. On Raw, they've got 10 minutes. There's nine of them. That's just a minute w- a week that they've got to get themselves over. And you can't you even can blame the that. company themselves because are we going to forget, meanwhile, I know you said you're only counting Raw, but meanwhile in NXT you have... Bailey versus Sasha Banks, my personal feud of the year so far. How that's, how can yeah, that exist in the same company as this fucking Divas Revolution? How does that happen? That's, that's why I'm not talking about NXT. By the way, we haven't announced this uh, on the show, I've realised. Me, Andy and Keelan are going to NXT in Nottingham in December. Yeah, December yeah. 14th. Um, but that's the reason why we're going to like NXT over something like Raw or SmackDown is because to me, NXT is Good. It's, its own entity. It's that's a different good. thing, right? It's that's why I don't include it because the way the way NXT is treating their women is the way that the women should be treated. Mm. Yeah, my point is that NXT, even if it is a some standalone thing, it's still WWE. Raw yeah, is still, still in WWE. By, it's still paid by WWE money, but I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Obviously, the writers are different. Maybe mm. the writers are younger. They're smarter. They're they know what the audience want. There's like two writers compared to 30. That's how 57 writers that failed on television. But have never ever experienced wrestling before. Brilliant. Why? Oh, hey guys, we got someone from a daytime TV show that no one ever really watches. They're going to talk, they're going to write the feud for two muscle bound men over a championship belt. You know what they want? They want drama involving Zack Ryder in a wheelchair being pushed off a stage. That's what the that's what the audience wants. Oh, they want they want Eve to look like he's hu- she's hooking up, or he could turn out she's a man hooking up with Zack Ryder, and then she kisses John Cena, and oh, love triangle. Oh, but wait, there's a title in the picture with another guy who's not in the company at the moment. I the, want wrestling. The issue the issue is is that they. 
don't book this. This whole thing is just orchestrated by an old man who's stuck in the fucking... I think he's just got into the 90s now. And he's just... And you got a producer in Kevin Dunn that just does not... Like, when they were doing that fucking uh, Mexican wave thing, they panned to it! They, they always do... pan to it. They always bring Why? it... Why? That's like saying... Our product is really shit, so look what that's the fans like, are that's doing. That's like saying, imagine watching a movie, and then, like, I don't know, Tom Hardy just goes, the Times rated this two out of five, by the way. And then just goes back to the movie. Great. Just, like, in the middle of it, it's just like, he just gives a review of what other people are saying of the movie at the moment. Can you just imagine that? It's just fucking stupid. Dumb. Why would you bring attention to that? So dumb. And I, Worse. But, I mean, I know, like, at the, like, I know we don't want to talk about NXT, but I've got a I've got to talk about Eva Marie. I just have to. Because they're trying to, like, center um, this Divas Revolution kind of maybe on her. And it's really weird because she's shit and she forgets, she to, forgets kick out, to kick out. Out of two. And she's, I mean, she's not as bad as she once was. Because remember Trish Travis? What was she doing before she was a wrestler? Oh, yeah, she was a fitness model. So she wasn't, like, wrestling her whole fucking life. And can we also remember that Trish was actually the manager of a tag team called TNA? Yeah. Can we just remember that? This was the Attitude Era. For those who might not know what TNA is, it's kind of obvious when you think about it. When you've got Trish Stratus, TNA, think about it. What is and she it's known not for? the bad wrestling company. Boobies. It's the bad wrestling company. <laughs> It's the answer's tits and ass, gents. That's the answer. That's yeah. the answer we were looking for. No points. Anyway, so don't get points. You don't get points. points. I, 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 I'm not even counting NXT personally. I, I have no opinion really from the failed Divas Revolution to what NXT is doing. I All you need to know is that NXT is good. It makes no sense as I, to how I, that's good in the same company as wait, Raw, where that. I is. don't. I don't agree that they're trying to center the divas revolution on Eva Marie, because if that was the case, she'd be called up by now. By the way, yeah. if, by the way, if my video is pausing, it's pausing at the best parts. Cause I keep doing derpy faces. The point <laughs> is, is that, um, this isn't Stephanie's, uh, fucking, uh, invention. If anything, this is the game. Do you know? No, 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 no. That isn't even triple H's invention. This so-called Divas Revolution came about because the Divas were given a two-minute match, if that, on Raw. And then fans just started a Twitter hashtag, give Divas a chance. And that's what sparked it. And they turned that into a fucking work to the point of the Bellas campaigning with them claiming it's their hashtag. And are we going to forget this whole, like, this entire thing thing of two matches on a card that are ten minutes long and, let's be honest, mediocre? They're not great matches. How is that a revolution? Yeah, you don't... And and the other thing, sorry, Andy, but leading with what Sam said, is it me or does the same thing happen every single time with the Bellas in that, oh, Nikki looks like she's on the ropes. She's going to lose. Oh, but Swerve, she keeps the title by pinning Brie because Brie swapped with her. Oh, yeah, can Swerve we talk about the end of that match, for fuck's sake? For those who don't every, know, Charlotte every, petitioned to have her title shot against Nikki on Raw the, ni- the night before Night of Champions. Why the don't Champions. the referees know this by now? And Did they take the fucking look- twin magic finish and it worked, and for some reason they didn't strip Nikki of the title, they just said, you're getting a rematch, uh, Charlotte, at Night of Champions, just what? so that Nikki can break the record. How does this Why? make sense? It doesn't. It one doesn't has make fake sense. breasts. The other one doesn't have fake breasts. No, but tissues and tattoos. Also, there's the other ob- obvious thing in that Nikki has lighter blonde hair than Brie. The referees and are kind hair. of blind. And longer hair as well. Four. Basically, to be a WWE referee, you have to be on the spectrum of blind. That's what it sounds like. It just doesn't make sense. It just, you know, the only way that I can ever see this whole twin magic thing actually paying off in a storyline is if they went, you know what, Nikki? Fuck you. Steel cage match. Bree can't get in. 
Percent. No, but you can't put women in a cage. That's someone's gonna die. Like Fair. actually, actually, that's incorrect. <laughs> they did actually have a women's cage match on Raw in I think two thousand and five, two thousand six. Ten years Trish ago. And it was. I thought it was Lita from Victoria. Oh, someone. If Victoria was definitely in it. I thought it was. Oh, Trish had the hardcore match with Victoria. That was it. It was one of the two, but yeah. there was definitely uh, there was definitely a steel cage match that. Victoria yeah, so I'm not saying there's never been one. I'm saying point being, they would not do that today because dumb shit reasons. But Someone's it's the gonna only die, Phil. way that this. It's the only way that this this whole plot line of twin magic would actually pay off and make sense in that. Okay, you've been doing twin magic for the past fucking years. Wait a minute. It'd be the best way for this whole revolution to fucking finish. Because they're actually fighting something that men fight in. Well, it's just something more interesting then. Oh, twin magic. Nikki wins again. The reason that Sam's just said is because they're women. So they can't fight in a cage. Bearing in mind, not even recently, this decade, they've had women's tables matches. So I really don't know why they can't be in a steel cage. Yeah, I don't get that. Why not do something? They wouldn't know what to fucking do with a steel cage. They would be too afraid to even go near it. So what's the problem? And it's the, a steel cage would be the only option. It would make the only sense. A table match wouldn't work. A ladder match wouldn't work. A hardcore match definitely wouldn't work. A steel cage match is the only way that this twin magic bullshit story can actually come to a conclusion and make sense. Not even that. Have a stipulation. Brie is banned from fucking ringside. Oh, but she'll dress up as Alicia Fox. I don't know. That's racist. What is it with you today? It's not... I don't know how you got that as racist. I she'll do blackface. <laughs> I didn't think Kind of racist, Liam. No, 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 no! I didn't mean it like that. I Thank God my webcam's that. broken, because my face right now is appalled. Stop <laughs> talking about your webcam! <laughs> okay. The people who listen to this on iTunes is going to be thrilled by Andy's commentary. <laughs> <of course>. <laughs> but, <laughs> um... No, I, I think it would. I think a, a steel cage match is the only way forward. But like you said, they're women. They have vaginas. They're sensitive. Can't can't do that. Delicate flowers that are already wrestling anyway. But no, put in some steel. Oh, scary. What? So... But it just that's the thing. It's just this diva's revolution. It fails because of. It's not a revolution. It, it, no, it fails because of three simple words, and we've said them many times over the course of this episode. It doesn't make sense that's four words shut up i can math right I okay math. cesaro <laughs> but it doesn't sense you don't sense <laughs> right that's all what i'm we talking about i don't know why it fails why it fails it doesn't make sense it it's fails not... because it's not a fucking revolution nothing yeah. about this is revolutionary that's what i mean it fails it does it fails it doesn't make sense so how do you fix it then, guys? Give Sasha Banks the fucking title. End of story. I I wouldn't say it that much. I would say, personally, actually just give them some decent screen time. Actually develop their characters. Make me interested. Stop with this bullshit twin magic Nikki retaining the title through bullshit means. And have her defend the title at least once a month. Right, this bullshit where she goes three months without defending the belt is stupid, right? Just give them. I don't give a shit if you give a network the two hour show or a three hour show or even a one hour show of just the women. Just develop their characters. T not TNA, fuck them. NXT somehow manages to do it and they have a one hour show and they've got to fit in the blokes as well. And women are main eventing the next takeover in a thirty-minute Iron Man match. So Iron Woman match. Fuck off, Iron Woman Political match. Whatever. Direct. Why can't they just do something like that, but on the main roster? Because, because the main roster is in a different universe where they have to appeal to like corporate sponsors and everything. And if you see women going what, through any form of strenuous activity, yeah, apparently. No, apparently, no, no. The apparently, thing is, they finish. won't do that. They won't do that because no one cares about them. Because they don't have personalities. It goes back to the fundamental flaw that I've been saying. They don't have. They have no personalities. John Cena has a personality. Not really. Seth Rollins. No, he does though. He does, he does. though. 
kind of. He's an right? arsehole no. who pretends to be Superman. That's his personality. He, he does have a personality, and it's marketable. Seth Rollins has a personality. They have history. There's a history. There's something that we've travelled with these characters. We've seen them for so long. They've been on our screens for so long. The Bellas, they've been on the roster for a while, but they went, they left for about a year or so. Then they came back, and they were managers for... Cody Rhodes and Damien Sandow, and then they didn't have that WrestleMania match. And then there's, they don't know what they're doing with them. At least with John Cena and Seth Rollins, they actually know what they're doing with them. They've given them characters and personalities and histories. We know their strengths, their weaknesses. We know Seth Rollins will do anything to retain the belt. He will here's, suck up. Here's right? the sad thing. What do the Bellas do? What do the Bellas do? I don't know. No. I don't know anything. I don't know. And that's... They have no personality. And, and that's why they won't main event. Because... No, they don't have a personality, therefore no one cares, therefore no one pays to see them, therefore they will never main event. Do and it's know? not even that they don't have any fucking personality. They don't, but they have a conflicting personality. <laughs> are we going to forget on yeah, Raw? Yeah, on firstly. Raw, Nikki and Brie are heels. Then, about half an hour later, we see a video package about their charity work. What are we meant to believe? Are they good people? No, are they bad no, people? No, 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 not even that. Let's, let us not forget what happened this time last year, ladies and gents, right? With the same two characters, Nikki and Brie Bella, right? So, Brie and... So, Daniel Bryan is in a, a feud with the Authority, right? And Brie, being the wife, is brought into the feud because, you know, who's, te- who's keeping track of kayfabe now? Because, fuck it. So, she gets brought in, and then because she's Daniel Bryan's wife... They start bullying her, and they start belittling her, and then Nikki is like, "No, don't do that." And then Brie gets fired. I, I, I might be paraphrasing some of the storyline here. No, you're not. Sounds, sounds about- right. So Brie gets fired, and then Nikki gets like, Nikki gets bullied, and then Brie comes back because it, why? So Brie comes back, Brie. and then and then Nikki's like. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Heel turn. Fuck you. You left me, even though you got fired. You, so you couldn't help me because you're not employed by this company. And then, so they're feuding. So Nikki's a bad guy. Bree's a good guy. And they're hating each other. And then just suddenly they're friends. Literally overnight. With no explanation. Are we also going to forget that Nikki Bella was apparently on the side of the authority and yet Stephanie McMahon said, hang on, we need a revolution. I'm going to handicap you in the worst way possible by introducing three new enemies for you. Oh what? God. Whose side are anyone on? <laughs> oh my god, my face is melting. And I'd like to bring a quote forward, gentlemen. This okay. is from Michael Cole from this past Monday. All right. Okay, go on, go on. There are many, including me, who believe the Bella Twins started the Divas Revolution. That is exactly (laughs) like saying there are many, including me, who believe the English started the American Revolution. There are many, including me, that believe the South started the Equal Rights Movement. How stupid do you have to be to say that in the first place? What the fuck? And that's just, that's a summary of the attitude that this company has towards this. They don't know how to book anybody. They don't know what storyline direction to go in. Do you know what's annoying? What's annoying? The person who's been around for over 20 years and has been booking this shit for over 10 is a woman. Stephanie has been booking this for so long... And she can't even get her own gender right. <laughs> How does that make sense? Fucking please tell me. I've had an epiphany. My light, a light has shone upon me. She's a woman and she can't book women. How does that make sense? Well, you have That's... men that can't book men, so what's your point? Well, she's just an idiot. <laughs> like, how do you, how do you, how do you fuck that up? You've made women look bad consistently for ten years, and then when you try and do good, you do bad. She doesn't even make women look bad. She makes everybody look bad. But the point is, she wants a she wants women to be treated more seriously. But she's been booking them like this for so long. What the fuck? She wants women to be treated seriously, and yet she is so bipolar as a character. How can anyone take her seriously anyway? Well, we 
we've mentioned that the authority are bipolar because on Raw and SmackDown they're villains, and then they open up NXT like NXT is the best. We're so proud of NXT. <laughs> we love the we love the young talent. We love the NXT. <laughs> Sorry, what? No, you can't hate one oh, audience and then hate the other. Like, what is? What? You can't be a good guy on one show and then oh, a yeah. bad guy on another. That doesn't make sense, buddy. Right? You. <sighs> Sorry, yeah, I've actually just realised I'm giving myself an aneurysm. Just, I mean, that's the best way that we can end this, right? I just, I can't, I can't, I can't even, I can't even. I this can't whole thing even, has been a right? failure. And I don't know how we can describe better as to how this is a failure, besides what we've already said. The fact that they have no personalities, the fact that even the WWE, as we saw last year with the Bella Twins, even the writers can't be invested in their own storylines. If you have to set up this, what they were calling, uh, what was it, Cinderella storyline, yep. of Brie Bella, you know, being all downtrodden. And the Supla's oh, worst storyline of the year, 2014. And she's downtrodden, but she'll come back and she'll beat everyone and she'll be Divas champion eventually. They scrapped that in one night. Even the Bellas. It's really sad because... There's, there's a, uh, I think there's something with them from a Comic Con, and somebody actually asks, "What happened to that storyline?" And even they went, "We don't really know." We were setting up this storyline that we had been, you know, building for for all summer, and then they just came to us on Raw and just went, "Yeah, no, we're we're scrapping that." What? Yeah, no, we're scrapping that. So you're scrapping an entire summer's worth of storyline. For what? What was it? What was the reason? What? So Be- Brie Bella can be Nikki's lackey for the next year. Yep. I feel sorry for Brie actually because she's been the lackey and yet she trains with Daniel Bryan. You know who I feel sorry for? Who? Natalia. Oh fuck! We haven't even. Where the fuck has she Natalia. been? We haven't even spoken about Natalia. You know where she's been Total Divas? Because that's all the re- that's the only reason why she's Oh, God, we didn't point. even talk about how Total Divas messes this up even further. Is Total Divas supposed to be canon or not canon? Do you I'm know confused. what? I like this show. I watch this show. I enjoy it. I've got no idea. Is it canon or is it not canon? I'm I don't confused. think it's canon because, because in that show, Alicia Fox and Paige are best friends. But, but... Naomi goes by her real name of Trinity, and yet Paige is still called Paige. That's not her real name, by the way, if yep. anyone wondered. That's not her real name. So why is one person going by their real name and the other one still going by their stage name? Because that, to me, makes it sound like that's supposed to be her real name, which means that isn't she supposed to be that character? That's who she actually is. Is it story, then? I mean, is is she actually getting engaged to this guy that she's supposed to be getting engaged to tonight? I but not tonight, think... whatever episode that they aired. Right. Is is that a real thing or is that I don't know at this point. I don't know if it exists in the WWE universe. I don't know if it exists in its own universe, which is kind of like kayfabe for kayfabe. So it's like it's kayfabe story line. level two. It's like it's, it's it's like a storyline about characters in another storyline. I think they're a there. headache. Please stop. <laughs> We're <laughs> through the looking glass. It's Fuck like the, are, are they stop, are they stop. Deadpool? Are they Deadpool? That's the only question. Because do they are they aware? Of what's happening. Uh, or is it actually real? I don't know. No one knows. What is going on? Diva's revolution. My brain is melting from this conversation. Please make it stop. <laughs> and with that, I think we should talk about this uh, competition. We have a competition going. As we mentioned at the start of the show, hopefully you're still tuning in to listen to what this competition is. We are giving away a free audio book. Yay. Very yeah. weird for the Supla, but stick with it. We're going to explain everything. We can read. Giving away. That's not what an audio book is. <laughs> right? Well, then I can't read then. <laughs> Do you seriously try to read audio books? What is that? <laughs> it's a challenge. You have to read them. It's a fucking impossible challenge. <laughs> impossible is nothing. Like you reading out the news. Anyway, go. Details. We are giving away a free download of an audiobook called Batman, The War on Terror, written by an incredibly talented, young, handsome uh, writer. Uh, it's me. <laughs> I'm just going to ruin the joke there. It it's was me, me all, along. all along. Damn you, you son of a bitch. I have written a short book called Batman, The War on Terror. It is a short academic invest because i am smart believe it or not i can english good um <laughs> i wrote a book um, anyway 
Uh, it's a short investigative uh, academic analysis on the Batman films. I wrote it, uh, and then it's been turned into an audiobook recently, and it's just been released. And a celebration, I am giving away a free audio book copy thing majig i can do words that's going this, this out this book is going to be riveting then <laughs> <laughs> i don't narrate it though it was an american guy who narrated it i just wrote the words um but it's go it's it's a free download all you have to do in order to potentially win the book or ebook or not an ebook there is an ebook I'm, I'm failing at this massive... go go carry on holy fuck you know what you mean <laughs> carry on all you have to do is leave a comment either on our YouTube video that you're watching now, if you're on our YouTube, or if you're listening on Supla.com or on iTunes or wherever else we are, go to Supla.com and leave a comment in any of the articles, may, maybe probably the one that is related to this video uh, or this episode, should I say. But leave a comment, and or even on Facebook, actually. Fuck it, we'll add it Facebook to the, to the mix. Leave a comment and explain your thoughts on the Divas Revolution. And the one that we think is the most intelligent and thought out uh, argument, whether you agree with us or not, it doesn't matter. You can say that we're completely wrong and you think this is a Divas Revolution. Uh, leave it uh, on Facebook, the website, YouTube, and whichever one we think is the most you know, well thought out, most intelligent, most convincing, will get the free uh, audio book of my book thing. Yes, Batman. It's awesome. You did I, it! Yay! You did a thing. The book is not as train wrecky as that, I swear. Even if it is, that'd be great. So, yes. Uh, one more time, just leave a comment whether you agree, disagree of the Divas Revolution, but make sure it's well thought out, intelligent. Uh, you can disagree, agree, whatever, but just, just do it, and you've got a chance to win the uh, Batman of War, The War on Terror by yours truly. That was, Good that, was for you. that was me winking. Right. Walk the silence until someone ends this. So, so let's wrap uh, this up in a neat little bow, shall we? So uh, that has been the Supla. We're back. We're an hour long. Um, this Divas thing isn't working. I am Andy Quad. Liam? Oh, right, me. I was wondering who was going next. Oh, my God. Well, I thought Andy was the one who did it. Who are you doing this for seven years, guys? <laughs> who are you? I, I am, uh, I am the young, talented, handsome, upcoming what writer. What has looks got to do with writing? Shut up, Liam Sam Brooks. Upcoming writer, Liam Dunn. Please buy my book, Shameless Plug. We'll see you next week for more of this chaos. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it. Make your dreams come true. Just do it. What are you waiting for? Do it. Just do it. Yes, you can. Just do it.